Hello, uh, I'm going to go over 3.1. This is the introduction to logic. The first objective we're looking at in logic is what are statements. So we're going to see many symbols, kind of uh, how we write things up symbolically in mathematics. Uh, so the first thing we ought to do is basically define what a statement is. A statement is a sentence that can be proven to be either true or false. So this has to be a fact. It cannot be an opinion. If it's an opinion, it is not a statement anymore. It's an opinion. So here's a little example for you right below. True or false, is it a statement? Part A, President Lincoln was a 16th president. Well, that's a fact that I can prove to be either true or false. By the way, it is true, and therefore it is a statement. And I just want to state that if I said President Lincoln was a first president, that's false, but I still can prove it, so it is still a statement. Part B, the Tampa Bay Lightning is the best hockey team in the NHL. Well, hopefully that's true for this year, but that can't be proven to be either true or false at this point. So we can say that's an opinion, so that is not a statement. And finally, this statement is true. This one's tricky because remember, you have to prove it to be either true or false. So if it's true, well, I don't know if it's true, it might be false. And if it's false, then the statement is lying. So this is actually a really tricky one. Uh, this is not a statement. All right, moving on. There are two types of statements, simple and compound, and we're going to go over what each one is. A simple statement will not contain a um, connective. A compound statement con contains a connective. And just so you know, what is a connective? That's the words and, or, or but. Okay, but, by the way, acts like and. We'll need that later. So a connective or a compound statement that has a connective, uh, you can break it up. Sorry, I had some weird thing happen. You can break it up into two or more simple statements. Okay, so here's an example of a connective. Jane is 17 years old and is dual enrolled. This is a compound statement because I can write this as Jane is 17 years old, that's a simple statement, and Jane is dual enrolled, that's a simple statement. So you can see when we use a compound statement, we have that connective connecting two simple statements together. Okay, moving on. Quantifiers. Uh, so quantifiers, we have to talk about the word negation first. Negation means the opposite meaning. So, for instance, if we had a true statement, if I negate it, it makes it false. The negation of some big words, all, none, some are, and some are not, uh, is really important. So, let's go ahead and write a chart. I want you guys to write down all and none, just like I did. And then we're going to put the words some are not underneath none because this is kind of like the negation of some are. And then we're going to put some right below all. 
So here's the interesting thing. You would think the negation of all is none, because that's what we've been taught. However, it's actually some are not. And this is kind of weird. Yes, you will need to memorize this. So just accept it, because I know some of you are like, what? So the opposite of all is some are not. The reason why is all is such an absolution. That means every single person. So the negation of it can't possibly be none. Uh, there's usually one that ex doesn't exist or something to that effect. So there's always like an exception to the rule. So that's why all, some or not is negation. The opposite of some is none. And it's for the same reasoning. You guys are hearing my dinner going off, but I'm still working on it. See how dedicated I am? Uh, anyways, uh, here's the next page. Write the negation of the following. Some cars are SUVs. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this uh, quantifier sum. So the opposite of sum is no, none or no. Okay, so if I write this up, I could say no cars are SUVs. Down here, we have the word all. So we learned that the, the opposite or the negation of all are some are not. Okay, so I'm going to write this up like this. Some whales are not dolphins. So once again, that's the negation of these two. All right, objective number three, understanding the connective symbols. So we talked about the connectives, uh, and, or, but. So here's what symbolically it looks like. So for or, it looks like a V, and that's called a disjunction. An and looks like a V upside down, and it actually almost looks like an A. Because if you put a line through there, it would look like an A. So this is and. Uh, it also is symbolic for but because but acts like and. And this is called the conjunction. I don't know if you guys have seen Schoolhouse Rocks, uh, but they had conjunction, junction, what's your function? Uh, so our function here is and and but. Okay. And by the way, when someone says a compliment to you, like, I really like you, but it's not working out for me. Uh, but is saying, I really like you, and it's not working out for me. So it's kind of one of those compliments that's not really a compliment. All right, so let's go ahead and look at an example. John likes cars or train. Write the compound statement as simple statements and then write it symbolically. Okay, so here's what we do. We usually use P's and Q's to write out uh, simple statements. So here's the first one I'm going to write out. John 